G'day everyone, welcome back to another weekly tipping video on the channel. In this video today, I'm going to be going over my tips for round 18 of the 2023 AFL season. If you've gone to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. Let's kick it off with my tips from last week. Okay everyone, so my tips from round 17, the previous round, and I managed to get a 6 out of 9. Probably around an average score. Probably should have done a little bit better given it was in the bottom 74% on ESPN footy tips. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, anyways, kicking off with it. Uh, tip the Swans, backed in my boys. And it's probably the last time I'm going to be tipping the Swans with confidence this year as they continue to disappoint. Second half's are totally poor. And the Tigers played a great brand in that second half. The pressure is good, dominating the clearance game to pick up a really solid win by 13 points at home. Tip the Pies, just backed them in as the better team. Felt the Bulldogs give them a bit of a bit of a run for their money. And, uh, you know, it was, just, it was just that third quarter from the Pies with their forward half use and their, you know, their transition that really um, caught the Bulldogs lacking um, and honestly probably should have been more than a two-goal win. Easy tip with the Lions. Backed in the Giants. Thought they'd win by more, to be fair, but um, I felt like their midfield got a little bit exposed from the Hawks. They played a pretty competitive brand, but it was just their, their ball movement there. End-to-end -end transition uh, was the difference in that game from the Giants. Did tip Melbourne, and I tipped them pretty unconvincingly because I felt the Saints would be a genuine chance in this game. They started the game off well, and it was a game in the balance, really, but I just felt Melbourne um, found good avenues to go to win that game. And yeah, a game where the Saints really could have won. They won a lot of those statistical differentials, but couldn't get up. Uh, tip Port Adelaide against the Suns. Maybe a potential danger game. Uh, Suns started well with Port Adelaide. Just with those third terms having as of late, able to flick a switch and kick an on sort of goals. Easy tip going with the Cats at home. Then I did tip the Crows, and fortunately on the wrong end of that one, as Essendon were just far too good at home. Their pressure, their ball movement, everything they did looked really impressive. It was a great, entertaining uh, one to watch, really. The Dons really playing that finals brand. Uh, and then, yeah, tip Freo for this last game here. I felt the Blues would, would be up and about for this one. Um, they played pretty decent in Perth, but Nah, it's just the Dockers were just shocking. Their midfield got pummeled as the Blues look to be back now with a bit more confidence in their ball movement and the power uh, in their midfield. So 6 out of 9, hopefully we can do better heading into round 18. Righty over on, so round 18 kicks us off with the first game on Thursday night. The Swans hosting the Western Bulldogs at the SCG. Another primetime Swans game. Another primetime Swans game of probably disappointment as that has just been the, the theme the last few times we've had a primetime game. Uh, but this one... Yeah, look, I, I really don't know. The Swans' as favourites is a bit questionable. I feel like the Bulldogs have been playing probably, probably a little bit better on paper. The Swans, before the game against the Tigers, were, were playing a pretty strong brand. Usually at home, the SCG, they're, they're a team that's able to have good ball movement. And I feel like you need to have that against the Bulldogs as their defensive transition is probably one of their weaknesses. So if the Swans can take the game on, score a lot of goals from defensive 50 transition, I feel like they are a good chance here, and they've really got to own in the midfield. And look at home, maybe that does, um, you know, fire them up and, and make them play a good brand of footy here. But it's just simple as this: the Swans haven't been the team above them in the latter this year. They've been haven't been able to really pick up any sort of result uh, against top eight sides at all. So yeah, for me, I, I do like the Bulldogs in this one. They're coming off a ba uh, the, the back of a, a loss, probably a healthy loss against the Pies, I do feel. They just got outplayed um, in that third term, out done. Uh, but I feel like their hunger is still there. They're still a, a pretty strong side in the midfield. And going inside 50-2, and two, um, I felt last week they, they were quite decent. You know, Hugo Hagen and Norton were awesome targets inside 50. They played great games. They're dangerous in the air. That's sort of an area where the Swans can struggle at in the air when the ball goes in there, defensive 50. Uh, so maybe it's a game that could be one in the midfield. The Bulldogs can smack the Swans in the contested game. And if they can be clean inside 50, I think they can win this game. But the Swans, it's all about their ball movement. They've got to take the game on. They've got to move it with Dare. Um, they're very good at that in their CG. If they can execute, hit the scoreboard, I feel like they can win this game as well. So yeah, it's a bit of a toughie, um, but probably just backing in what I did say with the Swans, I haven't been able to beat. Um, you know, and many teams above them or any team in the top eight. And I just feel like the Bulldogs off that loss, they will fire up and I feel like they are, yeah, playing a, a strong brand at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'll back in the Bulldogs here. I feel like I'll get up here um, and, and retain their position in the eight. So yeah, Bulldogs pick up this one on Thursday night. I feel like this one will be a, a low scoring game. Uh, I do feel, I feel like this one will be a bit of a scrap, but we'll go Bulldogs to get it done by 14 points. Next game here, Friday Night Footy, we've got the D's hosting the Brizzy Lions at the MCG. Well, it's another 
game at the MCG here for the Lions. Memes galore and or the piss takes galore. The Lions do not play well at the MCG. And granted, it is probably because they don't play there that often. You know, that's, that's, that's a fact I think we've all got to accept. But I feel like still... Interstate this year, apart from Adelaide Over, the Lions have, have played pretty decent. Oh, honestly, if we actually want to talk about Adelaide Over, they probably should have beaten the Crows, given their goal king wasn't good enough. So that was the reason why they did drop that game. But yeah, another one in the MCG here, facing the Demons. And I feel like it's a, it's not a bad time to face the Demons um, if you are a Lions supporter um, playing in the MCG, where you are very vulnerable at, because the Ds have been a little bit off the pace as of late. They're, um, yeah, you know, they still have good numbers around the ball and, um, plenty of inside 50s and everything, but still, I feel like they've just been um, a little bit vulnerable um, with scoreboard pressure at the moment, and I feel like if you're a side that's able to put on goal after goal, um, that's an area where the Demons can struggle to, to, to respond. Against the Saints, I felt like they were pretty mediocre in that win. I felt like the Saints honestly played better from time to time. They, um, they, you know, they got broken even around the ball and everything. So I feel like if the Lions are able to break even in the contest of the Ds and show their strong forward half use, they can actually really win this game. It is close odds-wise, a dollar eighty to two dollars. Uh, but the thing I did like about the Ds is they found good avenues to go last week against the Saints. Petrarca forward. Don't know how long he's going to stay in there because that could make their midfield a bit vulnerable um, and a bit weaker. But he's slot home four goals. Milksham was really strong. Ben Brown was really strong too um, on return. So yeah, if, if, if they're able to pick out their targets um, and really hit the scoreboard well, uh, you know, Cosy Pickett really needs to lift as well. The Ds should win this game at, um, at, at home at the MCG, just given um, the Lions aren't very good there. Probably a safe tip to go to the, uh, for the Ds. I probably would back them in, but... Something's just telling me about the Lions um, at the moment. I feel like defensively, they're a little bit better. Um, um, you know, when the ball is in the air, Harris Andrews has been fantastic as of late. Uh, you know, Jack Payne's been really great back there too. Leicester's been doing his doing his bits. And yeah, in the midfield, Dunkley, I'm pretty sure he's going to be coming back into the team. McCluggage, Neil, all those players in some strong form. Um, I'm liking how they're moving the ball as well. So I think if the, the Lions can win this game, they are going to be genuine flag contenders because this will be huge for their campaign their ability to win the mcg so you know what i'm going to back in the brizzy lines this is a risky tip because this could totally fall absolutely wrong again and they do get pummeled but i'll back them in i'm liking the way they're playing at the moment i've got to get rid of that still it's a bit of a hoodoo they have at the mcg um they're able to do it in the semi-final last year i think they can do it again this year against sort of a, a demon side that's been a little bit shaky as of late so we're back in the lines to pick up this win on friday night footy and we'll go brizzy to pick it up and win by 12 points next game here we got the pies taking on the Freo dockers at the mcg saturday afternoon footy so uh yeah the dockers very inconsistent this year. Every time I tip them, they fall to shit. And every time I don't tip them, they miraculously win. Um, the bottom line is, I just don't know if they're good enough this year. They've shown flashes where they're capable of winning some good games. But it's just always the same old when they do lose big games. The midfield falls apart. Going inside 50, they struggle. They struggle with ball movement as well. Um, and they just defensively this year compared from last year leak way too many goals um, And I think it's just the pressure in the ball is an area. They really do like um, I don't feel you know I don't feel they were, they were tough enough against the Blues and yeah, you know facing the pies in the MCG They're massive that size at seven dollars um, I don't want to feel like this game should be an easy win for the pies I feel like the Dockers are talented enough to maybe even win this game and to, to really show up here, but they're out of form. Maybe the Delkers do bounce back and play a bit more stronger brand of footy, but yeah, the Pies are hard to go past at the moment. They're playing terrifically um, with their end-to-end -end transition. Um, they're very strong in the midfield too. They, they, yeah, they're just overall there. They're, they're the way to go, the Pies. The team to beat, and I feel like they'll get a nice win over the Dockers here at the MCG. For Saturday afternoon footy, we'll go to the Pies, pick up a yeah, a bit of a comfortable win. We'll go Collingwood by 22 points. Next game here, we've got the Suns taking on the Saints at Heritage Bank Stadium. Well, recording this video, it was just announced that Stewie Dude did get the sack. So I don't know what's uh, I don't know what is going to happen now with the Suns in the context of their season. Will they now start to drop games and start to uh, you know a few players morale start to lower because uh, obviously Stewie Dude meant a lot to those players and vice versa. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to expect with the Suns, but usually the interim coach the first game they do win the game of footy. Uh, but yeah, hosting the Saints this is a hard one to tip because I feel like the Saints that was probably one of their more healthy losses last week. Um, I felt they were really, really good um, in, in some areas. They just lacked with a lot of ball skills and going inside fifty, but the effort was there. Um, I felt the heart was really there as well. You know, they just had forwards out. They had. 
a few plays out, but still Kamenetti was fighting hard, and um, also Owens in the air too, doing bits, and of course Filippo as well. They didn't really have the personnel to compete when going forward, but they still did really well in a lot of statistical differentials. They were strong in the contest, um, and I feel like against the Suns, where they're sort of, at the moment, a team low on morale, I feel like there's a great opportunity for the Saints to get the win. Uh, up at the Gold Coast, but there just always is something with the first interim coach. I feel like maybe I could be totally wrong. This could boost a few spirits of the plays and really lift for Stewie Jew um, as he is now sacked. So yeah, this is a tricky one to do. Um, I really like the Saints in this one. I feel like they, they can win this game of footy given what I did see last week. They could be really fired up, um, but I'm going to be backing in Gold Coast here. This is a, a risky tip. They could totally fall to crap. Uh, but yeah, just the first game as an interim coach, they usually do play a good brand. And I feel like maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe instead of the morales being lowered, they, they, the players do lift um, in in memory of Stewie Jew. He's not dead. I don't know why he said that, but you know what I mean. Um, I feel like the spirits will be up and about. And yeah, yeah, the Suns will bounce back. They've, they've been in a poor vein of form, so I feel like they can get it right at home uh, over the Saints. So we'll go the Suns to pick this one up and buy... Maybe a bit of a tight KG affair. We've got Gold Coast by nine points. Next game here, we've got the Blues hosting Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium. I want to tip here. Um, I have, it has to be said because the Blues have been in some great form as of late. They've been pretty competitive. They've been really, really good in the midfield as well. Um, and yeah, they're starting to really score from clearance now. They're starting to move the ball with Dare. They're all up and about. They're confident. And this one's at Marvel Stadium. So with the huge home supporting crowd, um, at their playpen, it has to be said they usually play their best footy there. They're a great chance here against Port Adelaide, but Port Adelaide, I think it's 12 or 13 in a row. I've lost count now. They are playing terrifically um, as of late. Sometimes they are a little bit vulnerable from time to time um, throughout courses of a game, but they always seem to hit their straps um, mid-game. They always find, seem to find adjustments and play some strong footy. Uh, so, yeah, this is... This, I do like the Blues here. I feel like they are a genuine chance to knock over the, uh, the power here, given... They're all up and about, uh, but I just think Port Adelaide at the moment are playing the better footy. Um, their ball movement is very, very entertaining to look at, and they are still a very competitive side in the midfield. Um, Lee Lee was fantastic last week. Rosie was in great form. Butters has been a little bit you know, out of form. He hasn't been at his total best from the last uh, few weeks, so I feel like he could really rise up here. You know, the, the, the forwards are getting plenty of output from them. So, yeah, I think Port Adelaide at Marvel Stadium, they're very good at Marvel too. Um, so I'll back in the Port Adelaide here, just given they are the better team. Um, but it won't shock me if the if the Blues can get the upset. But yeah, Port Adelaide to pick this one up and win by 16 points. Next game here, we've got the Cats hosting the Dons at GMHBA Stadium. The Cats look like their 2022 best of themselves from last week, what I did witness against North Melbourne. Very, very unselfish play from a lot of players. Everyone playing their part, role players playing their part, and plenty of output from a lot of their forwards. Without Jeremy Cameron, Stengel's great, Hawkins is great, Ollie Henry with four goals too. They got plenty of output from those particular plays, and now they are hosting an Essendon side who are up and about their brand has been really, really great to watch as of late. They've moved the ball really well. They're all on the same page. The cohesion when going forward's really great, so they always pick it their targets. Peter Wright and Langford are in great form. Stringer as well, Parrish and Merritt. I feel like everyone is, is on song in the moment, and I feel like they're every chance to knock off the Cats here, but it's always, always just a tricky one to tip in general. Geelong at home, you probably back them in. From time to time this year, the Cats have always been a side that's been a little bit shaky uh, behind the ball and um, defensively. So I feel like if the Dons really want to win this game, they've got to pick it, their targets in zone 50. And at ground level too, um, I feel like the Dons can really take it up to the Cats. They've been a really, really heavily competitive and hard at it side whenever the ball's at ground level. They get it out really well. Um, you know, Parish Merritt's in great form too. So I feel like this is a really, really good chance um, for the Dons to pick up the win over the Cats here. But it's just the Cats at home. I, I, I've probably just got to back them in. They've been in good form as of late. And what I did see against North Melbourne, I was against North, their brain was really, really good. Um, so yeah, I'll back in Geelong here. Even though I feel like the Dons are a great chance to win this game, I think the Cats get it done at home. So we'll go Geelong to pick up this win. This one will be a close one, I reckon. We'll go the Cats by seven points. For the final game of Saturday, we do have the Crows hosting the Giants at Adelaide Oval. The Crows, you all know, interstate, pretty mediocre side, but when they are 
at their fortress of Adelaide Oval. They look like a top four side. They move the ball there. The pressure is fantastic. Um, they look like just a top four quality team. Uh, but it has to be said, the Giants, uh, every chance to maybe pinch this one because their form's been really good. They've been good interstate. Uh, they're a little bit... Look, I felt in the midfield they got beaten up a little bit uh, convincingly by the Hawks, but where they can beat the Crows is just with ball movement. I feel like as of late, the Orange Tsunami is sort of coming back. They're playing a lot of dare through the corridor, um, and I feel like there's been some really, really good plays in form back there defensively. Sam Taylor was fantastic. Buckley as well, and then, yeah, Ford, Riccardi, and Hogan on the, off the back of seven goals combined last week. They can maybe cause some damage uh, at Adelaide Oval. And Toby Green's been a little bit out of form. Does he fill his boots in this game here and maybe kick a few? So I really like the Giants in this tip, but again... I don't think the Crows have dropped the game at Adelaide Oval this year. Oh, no, they dropped that one, um, of course, against the Tigers and um, also the Pies. But just from that point onwards, they've been unstoppable at home, it has to be said. I don't know if the Giants are... It, it's just hard to say the Giants knock them off. I feel like they'll really give them a good run for their money, uh, but the Crows just run away with it because they are a brilliant side to watch at home, um, and they should bounce back here after the loss against Hess in the previous week and win. So I'll go the Crows by 16 points. For the Sunday games now, we do have North Melbourne taking on the Hawks at Marvel Stadium. North Melbourne, well, they just continue to drop games, really. They're struggling to win. I think the last time they won was quite a while ago. I mean, the last one was obviously against Fremantle back in round two, so they just cannot win. Um, they've been competitive from time to time, but what I did see last week was, was terrible. Um, they were very uncompetitive uh, against the Cats. They were just terrible um, defending ball movement. Um, they couldn't get the ball out of the defensive half. Just a really, really ugly display. Facing the Hawks, who were pretty strong last week against the Giants. I felt they were competitive. They just lacked execution, went under pressure. Um, they were every chance to knock off the Giants. Um, and that game is a hard place to, uh, to win at uh, Giants Stadium. So just based off last week, I think the Hawks should waltz into this game and win. But I'm expecting a competitive game. Uh, kind of, you know, competitive sort of comeback or response from North Melbourne because they do play their best footy at Marvel Stadium. So I feel like they're a genuine chance to bring it up to the Hawks here, but the Hawks are just the better team on paper at the moment. They're in a bit better form. They get Sicily back, so that should give them every chance to, to knock off North Melbourne here, possibly convincingly. It is just hard to grab a grasp on North Melbourne, given how they have been playing as of late. So the Hawks should head into this game and win. And we're we'll going with the Hawks to win by 23 points. And for the final game of the round, 4.40pm West Coast, hosting the Tigers at Optus Stadium. Well, the Eagles, a little bit on and off. Um, it was a poor game last week, really. They conceded 200 points the week, the other week before uh, against the Swans. But then at Optus Stadium, out of nowhere, they put up a really good fight against the Saints. So I'm not going to be saying they're going to win this game. You, you, can't, you just can't back in the Eagles for the win. But maybe at Optus Stadium, they are playing with um, a little bit more competitiveness and a little bit more dare. Um, that's just how they seem to play uh, against the Saints. They really own the midfield from time to time. So, yeah, if the Eagles are wanting to, to really try and put up a fight, they've got to try and own that midfield again, dominating those clearances. Uh, but, yeah, the Tigers, off the back of that great win against the Swans last week, were great in the clearance game, great move in the ball, and we're seeing Shea Bolton, Dusty Martin, a few players really starting to hit some form. So, yeah, the Tigers should head into Perth and pick up a really, really big and strong win here. So we'll go to the Tigers to pick up the win for the final game of the round and win convincingly Richmond by 48 points. So over on there, my tips for round 18 of the 2023 AFL season. Make sure to comment down below and let me know what you think of my tips and feel free to comment down your tips down below too because there are a few 50-50 games. So I do love to hear your people's opinions. Once again, everyone, thank you very much for watching today's video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you wanted to enjoy. That would be heavily appreciated. And until next time, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.